Welcome here this morning as we gather here in Bethany to worship God, the God of our hope, the God who comes and calls us to a life resting in Him. Welcome to you this morning. If you're new or visiting with us or stopping by, we're glad you're here. And those online who are worshiping with us as well, both Bethany members and those from the broader community, we're glad to be able to continue to be able to worship. We continue to pray for safety for our communities as we go through this time. I have a couple of announcements just to share. First, also welcome this morning. We are looking a little more closely at Teen Challenge, one of the organizations that we support as a church. So Mark and Christy are here to share with us in a, in a little bit. Also, uh, we're going to watch uh, a couple of announcements before we do that. Um, today, Life Chain is taking place. This is the pro-life silent prayerful demonstration taking place in communities all across our country. It's from 2 till 3 in the afternoon. There's a life chain happening, I know, in Welland and in St. Catharines. I don't know if it's in Niagara Falls. I couldn't remember that. But if you go to the uh, website for um, uh, Pro-Life Canada or you look at the email that was sent out this past week, there's links there to find out exactly where um, they are meeting. And uh, it is open to anyone to come and attend for the hour as we prayerfully witness in our communities for the need for us to protect our unborn children and support the lives of mothers in crisis. So that's taking place today. Also, Mike and Holly Robson were blessed with the birth of a baby girl. Alice Elizabeth was born this past Wednesday at seven pounds, four ounces, and mom and daughter are doing great. And so we rejoice with them, with the Robsons as well. Okay, so we have a Rose City visit video. That's ready to go. This is a Rose City Kids video. Um, this is about what's coming in the, for, over the next couple of weeks. You may have seen the display in the back. Um, Lorraine's standing in the back. She's waving. See her? Um, the display has a whole bunch of things in there. The, the video is going to explain some of that. If you have questions afterwards, if Lorraine will be nearby that table, then you'll be able to uh, get some further questions on how we're supporting Rose City kids in this time. So let's watch that video. I'm Sierra and I'm Caitlin and we are volunteers at Rose City Kids. Rose City Kids is a place where the children and youth in Welland can experience God's love through many different programs that are provided. Each year all the kids at Rose City Kids get a Christmas bag. This year we get to hand out 500 Christmas bags and each of the bags will be delivered to their door. We would like to tell you about how you can help with this opportunity. One of the ways you could help is you could grab one of these red bags and a list and fill the whole bag. Each of these bags will be marked with the child's name, age, and gender. Another way that you can help out is by collecting one of the five items that our church will be gathering. These include hygiene products, winter hats and mittens, school supplies, candies and chocolate, and small activities and games. These items will be used to fill the remaining bags at Rose City Kids. And the final way that you can help out is by donating money to the church and earmark at Rose City Bags. We will then use that money to collect the remaining items that we need for the bags. We have a table set up in the Fellowship Hall that you can drop off your items or bags, or you can drop them off at the door at the church or at Lorraine Waringa's house. We would like to collect these bags between October 4th and October 18th. God has blessed us with so much, and we are grateful for all that he has provided us with. But Christmas isn't always the same for everyone, and it isn't always the happiest time. These bags are a small way that we can help put smiles on these kids' faces. Sharing a bit of what God has given us can have a huge impact on these kids' lives. We want to thank you in advance for all the help in making this happen for these kids. So again, the materials for that, the empty bags that you can fill on the back table in the fellowship hall, have a look after the service. And we, we have the, the next two weeks to uh, do our drive, so um, pay attention to that as well. We'll probably send some reminders out in the meantime. This morning, our call to worship comes from the words of Psalm 18. The psalmist says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, 
My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. Let's rise together and celebrate the God who saves. Let's sing.
between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the
our Lord greets us with these words from Galatians 1. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to whom be glory forever and ever. And God's people say, Amen. As we mentioned, Teen Challenge has a presentation this morning as part of our worship. Sort of is, of course, not just information, but is also how we 
interact with the Lord who is at work, not only in churches, but also in parachurch organizations, uh, dealing with the situations, the brokenness of life. And so this morning, again, welcome to Mark and Christy. Christy, thanks for leading in worship this morning as well. Um, and we're starting with a video, correct? That's right. Okay, so we have the Teen Challenge video. I don't know where. Yes, I don't know where. COVID, I know that too. Hey, (laughs) addiction is a plague to mankind. Um, I would say there's no country, no city, and I'll be bold enough to say no church that hasn't been affected by drugs and alcohol. And I know from experience that recovering from an addiction is a very complex process. The road is never smooth. In fact, you'll always encounter hardships, obstacles, and heartaches. But it's a journey that everyone hoping to recover from an addiction must make. It's the only way to move from a life of destruction to a life full of hope, health, and wellness. So let's talk about the word hope for a minute. And what a great worship song, The Living Hope. That was uh, uh, very fitting. So each of us defines hope differently, but in essence, hope is the expectation that things in the future will be better, knowing that the sun will shine again. So in relation to recovery, hope becomes a foundation that drives us to find a way to get better and heal. It keeps us strong when we encounter challenges, and hope gives us a sense of joy and peace knowing that a better tomorrow exists. And I am here to say hope has a name, and that name is Jesus Christ. While a person may get caught in the snare of addiction, the good news is that he or she doesn't have to stay there. Jesus' death on the cross saves us from our sins, and not just the sins of the past, but the temptations of the present. No matter what we have done, no matter how severe an addiction might be and how badly we struggle, there is hope and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So it's heartbreaking to me to see that there's so many people out there right now trapped in the snares of addiction. I can't even count on two hands the amount of friends I've lost to either overdose or suicide. The truth is that most people suffering from an addiction don't know where to go. Um, They don't know how to seek recovery, and they really think that getting better is impossible. A lot of people are in denial about their illness or too ashamed to say that they're addicted. I know this because I've been there, and it sucks. I once, too, believed the lies that I couldn't change that I wasn't good enough, that I'd always be a a low life, a criminal, a drug addict. I was ashamed. I was full of guilt. I had lost all hope. But now I know different. Overcoming addiction is possible. 
Matthew 11, 28 says, Jesus says, Come to me, all you weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My name is Mark Thomas. I am the development officer of the London Teen Challenge and also a 2012 graduate of the program. So I was actually born uh, in the Welland County General Hospital at a very young age. Yes. Yes. Um, but I have very fond memories of this area for sure. Um, I golfed as a junior at Peninsula Lakes. I often tobogganed at Lookout. I don't even remember the Fenwick Fair. So um, it's nice to be home and see all you see all you people. But what happened with me, I guess, was uh, entering, I guess, grade nine. My parents went through a divorce, and like many of us do, kind of in that transition into high school, um, I was searching for identity. And obviously, I I, I found identity in the, in the wrong things. So. Um, started drinking and doing those sorts of things and I guess when people started going off to university and you know pursuing their, their goals and their dreams um, I was still going into a darker place so um, let's fast forward to summer of 2011 so what started off as innocent fun uh, I turned into a homeless intravenous using drug addict on the streets of Barrie for the first time ever can you actually go to the my slide with the uh, Go, go up a couple. Okay, right there's good. Um, so that's my intake photo at Teen Challenge, uh, November 22nd, uh, 2011. I know what you're thinking, pretty handsome guy. Um, but I was a mess. So summer of 2011, I was on the streets of Barrie for the first time ever feeling what it was like to be cold and hungry, strung out, having nowhere to go. Like, it, was, it was really, really bad. I had a part-time job at a nursing home setting up tables at night. And part of that job in the morning was to help a few residents get up and get ready for their day. And uh, there was one resident in particular who loved for me to put him in his wheelchair and bring him across the street to get his Tim Hortons. But I often had to take funds out for him with his bank card because he couldn't see. And in that moment of weakness and addiction where I needed money, I stole thousands of dollars from this man. And a few weeks later, I was arrested, and I, I, I was let go on a promise to appear in court later on that month, and I was really hoping no one would find out, and I'll get through this. But it made the A-Channel News. So there I was on the 6 o'clock news. Uh, it made social media very quickly, so I was getting calls from friends, family members. Basically, you're discussing, you're a monster, you're, you're a terrible human being, how could you do this? And it always makes me pretty sad to talk about. But anyway, um. The hardest part about that day, and I, I definitely my rock bottom, was my mom. I'm her baby boy. Um, she's on her way home from work, and she hears on the radio that Mark Thomas has been arrested. And she finds me that night, and I was in a rough state. And I remember she was hysterical. She was pounding on the ground and crying, and, and I've never seen my mom this upset. And then I remember... She stopped crying, and she kind of grabbed me by the collar and said, said, son, baby boy, please tell me that this, this guy in the news isn't you. And when I told her that, Mom, this is me, I watched her heart shatter into a million pieces, and man, um, it was a terrible feeling. And so here's the problem. I'd been through nine other rehabs at the time, uh, been through a lot of counseling and medications and all sorts of different things and honestly thought I couldn't be fixed and I, I although I went to a Catholic high school um, I'd never been to church right so um, there was no hope so I was told about Teen Challenge and that's the picture of me coming in November 2011 broken just completely broken and um, it took me a while like it took me a while to, to get into the word and start praying and I got saved at a promise keepers late in March and um, it was the start of my new life, so definitely new creation. And the thing about Teen Challenge is it's more of a discipleship program disguised as a rehab center. If our goal was to only get people to stop drinking and using drugs, we've missed it. Um, our job is to get people connected to, to Jesus Christ, and he's the one. He's the catalyst for change. He's the one that changes life. So that's what I love about our program. So next slide. 
So this is my life now. Um, that's my beautiful wife, Sheila, and my dog, Lowry. I'm a huge Raptors fan. So, um, and the reason I show this is, is, is not a prideful thing. Like, look at my life. Um, I'm not an anomaly at Teen Challenge. There's so many stories like this where people go from rock bottom to just a beautiful life. And um, I guess my encouragement to you today is, you know, I'm sure everyone here can raise a hand. I know someone that's really struggling. There's hope. Um, if there's hope for me, there's, there's hope for anyone. Next slide. Okay, so I think first before I talk about a program, I want to talk to you a bit about the epidemic, okay? You guys probably should know what's going on in your country, even in your community. So 2018, there was uh, a survey with the Canadian Alcohol and Drug Use Monitoring S Survey, it's called. And it estimated that 21.6% of Canada's population meet the criteria for substance abuse addictions. So if you put a number on that, that's actually 8 million people. Crazy. And currently, I'm sure this isn't breaking news, Canada is going through what they're calling the opioid crisis. Um, fentanyl. Fentanyl is the big one. And it's actually been declared a public health emergency. I've seen, I've seen close friends just drop dead and um, it sucks, right? It's in your community, it's around. Um, we need to pray against those, these sorts of things because um, it's not good. So uh, since 2016, actually with fentanyl alone, 35,000 overdoses in Canada. And last year, if you actually put a number on it, that's 13 lives I think each day were lost because of overdose. So in London, where we're from, um, quite staggering what's going on. We had the third most overdoses in Canada in 2018. Like, not a per capita stat. This is, you know, a, a number, and that, that's crazy. And we gave out needles at a rate only second to Vancouver. And London was actually the only city in Ontario that where blood-borne illnesses such as HIV and Hep C was, was on the rise. Um, there's a huge problem. And with COVID-19, there's been a massive spike in overdoses, a massive spike in relapse. Um, for people in recovery, like isolation and not being connected to a church or a support group, um, it's not good, right? And a lot of relapse, too, with people losing their jobs and financial stress, those sorts of things. So you don't hear much about that on the news, but we're actually, you know, addiction is now a pandemic within a pandemic. So please pray for the addicts who are out there right now struggling. Okay, so... Um, you guys know a lot about Teen Challenge. We've been here a number of times, and thank you so much for your support. But I just want to walk, th walk you through a few items here. So at Teen Challenge, we believe that true, um, true freedom from addiction is possible, and we know this from experience. Uh, our re approach requires us to invest deeply in the individual and help them pursue full recovery and to live in sobriety. So we actually um, we operate nine centers across Canada which is great from coast to coast. Can you get that slide of the map there, guys? There it is. Um, we recently had centers open up for women in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Saskatchewan called the Prairie, um, Prairie Home for Women. Sorry. Um, next slide, please. So I have a question for you. Does this program work? Maybe a show of hands here. Cool. So I'm going to give you guys a few amazing stories here. So this is Dustin Cook. Um, so Dustin had a pretty good life growing up. However, not knowing how to cope with the death of his father, flunking out of college, uh, he dove deep into addiction and things became quickly unmanageable. Cocaine, crystal meth, and marijuana led him to a dark and cold jail cell for a robbery he committed. Dustin made the decision to go to Teen Challenge three weeks after he was released on bail. Next slide. Dustin is currently in his final year of a Bachelor of Theology in Pastoral Ministry at Emmanuel Bible College and is married to his beautiful wife, who is also a graduate of the Teen Challenge Women's Center. They have both committed their lives to serving Christ, and Dustin now holds a job as a youth pastor at his local church and intends to continue pursuing his calling as a pastor. Pretty cool, eh? Next slide. This is Evan Dunn, probably out of the eight years I've been working at Teen Challenge, the angriest 
young man I've ever seen walk through the doors. So Evan experienced severe loneliness in his addiction. After two attempts at rehab, multiple overdoses, hospitalizations, and living in a homeless shelter, he realized he needed help. In utter desperation, he cried out to God, begging for freedom from his addiction to drugs and alcohol. Next slide. After graduating Teen Challenge, Evan experienced a new way of living. He completed high school as well as his post-secondary education and obtained a bachelor's degree to become a certified addictions counselor. God provided restoration and Evan was able to reconcile with his family. So today Evan works as a counselor for a therapeutic community and works for Youth for Christ in the Waterloo region. And Evan and his girlfriend just recently got married. Pretty cool. Okay, so next slide. So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. We've had a really, really tough go with, with COVID-19 at Teen Challenge. Um, back on March 17th, we had our first positive case, uh, which led to many, po many positive cases, and that led us to have to close down the center from the middle of March to the end of May. So we're just slowly bringing guys back now. We have 11 guys out of 52 beds. So it's, it's been a struggle. Um, and from a fundraising perspective, um, we've had to cancel, obviously, all of our events, and we just have started doing outreaches again. Um, so three ways I'd love to introduce you guys getting involved today is, number one, pray. Um, pray for us as an organization. Pray for our leadership. Pray for our staff. Pray for our students. But most importantly, pray for the addict that's still out there suffering. Um, today, you can give a one-time gift to Teen Challenge. I think Karina's going to walk you through that or someone. And lastly, we have a sponsorship program. So if you're interested in doing a monthly sponsorship of a student, I'll have all the information at the back after the service. So um, thank you so much, and God bless you guys. going to sing in response, no longer slaves. Please stand to sing with us. Deliverance from my enemies to 
Let's come to God in prayer. Almighty God and Father, from whom all humanity derives the name of yours, your creatures, your creations, you've made us all fellow image bearers of your glory. And we recognize, Lord, that sin, evil, brokenness, trouble, terrible times and darkness hides that image so thoroughly at times that we wonder who we are. And then you come. You come as one of us in Christ Jesus, entering into our existence, our life, becoming just like us, except the sin. And through your journey, your ministry, through your suffering, especially on the cross, through your death, and then through your resurrection, you have opened the way to hope, to life, to new starts and restorations. And Lord, you call us to be ambassadors for that good news. And so this morning, Lord, we we give you thanks with the ministry you are doing in Teen Challenge. We thank you that we can be a part of that as a congregation here. We thank you, Lord, for those in our midst who have experienced the blessing of that or for loved ones. And Lord, we recognize the deep need for this kind of help and ministry. For in our own households and families and extended friends, Lord, we have people we know who are caught in the chains of addiction, who are slaves to fear right now, and they need, Lord, to hear the gospel, and they need the power of your Holy Spirit to break through the darkness and bring them light, and they need places to go where they can learn and grow and be supported and prayed for and taught to pray and grow away from the darkness into the light. Lord, we think of what we heard this morning about what's going on in Canada. We we know we have a COVID pandemic, but Lord, we also have a darkness, addiction, homelessness, brokenness pandemic. People are losing their lives, Lord, and they are not finding their way onto the news. Lord, communities in different parts of Canada are wrestling with how to respond. And I confess, Lord, so often we, in the blessed of the lives that you've given us, Lord, we forget that you give us blessing and wholeness and healing. You give us strength, not just for ourselves and our households, but for the communities around us where we stand as ambassadors, where we are to be lights on a hill, where we are to shine the good news of the gospel. So, Lord, we pray that all that is needed in Teen Challenge will continue to be provided. We pray, Lord, that we too may respond according to your will in our hearts, in our lives, and in our giving. And that, Lord, we may continue to strengthen organizations near and far, Lord, that carry out the work that we often cannot do on site, we cannot do ourselves, but, Lord, we can use the resources you provide. And so we want to thank you for that. And today as well, Lord, in the pro-life witness across Canada, we pray that many passers-by may catch the message of protection for unborn children. That, Lord, pregnant mothers in crisis may experience a surrounding with voices and people of hope and support, not just for the birth, but for years to follow. And, Lord, may those who have suffered the trauma of having an abortion find healing and peace in your forgiving presence, in your loving people you place in their lives. Help us, Lord, to be those people. And Lord, we pray for our government leaders here in Canada to step up and to care about our unborn, to care about those who are lost in addiction, to care about homeless people, our neighbors. Give them courage to speak truth in love. Give them courage to make decisions, to put in policies and practices that bring healing and restoration. And Lord, as we think of this COVID pandemic across the globe, we pray for healing for this world that belongs to you. We pray for, Lord, an international response of care and support that does not come with judgments 
that does not come with pride or greed, but comes with a love for the hurting. We think also, Lord, this morning of the growing conflict in Armenia and Azerbaijan. And we pray, Lord, for, for peace to return there, for support from the countries involved, Lord, that they may find a way to bring about a ceasefire. Lord, long-standing hatreds have such an evil influence. We pray against that in the name of Jesus for the love of God to overcome that. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in the faith in these places, that you may keep them deeply tied to your calling in their lives and that they may resist the temptation to slide into the anger and the hatred and the revenge. That in these things too, Lord, we recognize that the kingdom is yours and that this world is yours. And Lord, we belong to you here in this church in Bethany and the community we are a part of. And Lord, so we pray for the Bethany Council, all our ministry teams as we continue to strive to carry out our calling as your church and we, to do so in safe and effective ways will you give all wisdom and insight. And we pray, Lord, also for our upcoming ministry staff needs that you will provide as you always have, leading us to the people of your choosing. And Lord, we want to give you thanks for your faithfulness in, in our lives and opportunities to mark that. We want to Rejoice with Cor and Ina and their 40th anniversary recently and others in our congregation who have celebrated that marker. We're grateful, Lord, for your faithfulness in the lives that you bring us into, in our marriages. We pray, Lord, for strength and for a continued reliance on you. We want to rejoice with Mike and Holly in the birth of Alice, Lord. Thank you for an answer to many prayers for them. And also, Lord, bless them as new parents. May they be filled with the joy of knowing that you are with them in all things. And Lord, for those who are facing the health challenges in our midst, we think of Henry and Linda, for Bob and Adrian and others. Lord, may you surround them what they need day by day with your graces, that they may experience what your word says, that your mercies are indeed new every morning, for great is your faithfulness. And Lord, we pray also for those dealing with mental health difficulties, especially when crisis arises and also during this COVID time, Lord, increased pressure and isolation. We pray, Lord, for adequate care to be available. We pray for those who are caring for them, that you'll give what is needed. And Lord, where people are alone, may you bring into their lives those that can help them and help them to reach out. That we might know together, Lord, that we belong to you. And you are a God of grace and mercy, a God of forgiveness and healing, a God who brings us through the trouble. And yet, Lord, you have promised never to leave us or forsake us in that. And especially, Lord, for those who mourn. We think here locally of the Tabrake family. Also, Lord, all those who mourn the loss of loved ones because of COVID and those who mourn the loss of loved ones, friends, family because of addiction. An overdose. We pray, Lord, for comfort in those contexts and for a healing hand there. That, Lord, as they mourn, that we as your people may be willing and ready and able to come alongside and to bear each other's burdens. For that's what you have said is a fulfillment of your command to love. And as we turn to your word now, Lord, we pray that your spirit may inhabit the proclamation. That together, Lord, we may hear what you wish us to hear in our hearts and lives. May take it from this place and live in your grace and peace, in the hope that you give us in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, and God's people say, Amen. We're going to read together from Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We're going to read the first uh, 11 verses, but the focus will be on the first five verses. Romans chapter 5 at verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. 
and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Presents and gifts. We buy each other gifts for all kinds of occasions, right? And the point of a gift is to bless the person receiving it, of course. So if you say, let, let's say you bought a, um, an, or, an ornate scented candle as a gift for a friend, and then a few months later you drop by and you're visiting, and in the course of your visit you, you happen to see the candle still in the packaging, tucked on a shelf behind a pile of magazines, you're going to feel a little disappointed and realize the gift has never been opened or used. And it bothers you a little bit because the intent of a gift is for it to be used, to be enjoyed, to be received with gratitude as a blessing. And no one wants to give a bad gift. I think most husbands know they should not buy their wives any cooking or cleaning apparatuses for their birthdays. Most husbands know that if their wives buy them a new shirt or a jacket with the tag that says to replace the old one, that that's what they're supposed to do, throw out the old one and wear the new one. Gifts, even decorative gifts, are intended for use, even if it's just visible display for enjoyment. That's what a gift is, something suited to the recipient to bless them. There's a U.S. statistic that was in the 2013 Harvard Business Review that says between 35 to 40 percent of gift shoppers will opt for, opt, opt for a gift card from a department store or a restaurant when looking for a gift. And that can be a great idea. It's maybe you think, well, maybe a little lazy to do that, but getting a gift card, but at least you know that that person can pick out what they want and they will enjoy it. Now, that article also said, that the average American home has about $300 of unused and unredeemed gift cards in their houses somewhere. So we'll be looking afterwards. They're either misplaced or accidentally thrown out, or sometimes they're just partially redeemed and then you forget about them. And statistics, and this they can track, between 2005 and 2011, in the U.S., $41 billion of gift cards went unused. Gifts are meant to be used. So also with the wonderful gifts of God. And God grants his gifts through all kinds of ways and experiences. In all the smaller graces we receive each day, the safe drive home, the helping hand of another, encouraging word of a friend, the food you eat. All these gifts from God, all these daily smaller graces are resting on a number of deep permanent, all-encompassing gifts God gives us. Now, Teen Challenge is an organization that is used by God to give such gifts, and one of these gifts is what was mentioned is hope. We all need to live by the hope we receive from God. And in times when the weight of our experiences or our struggles or our choices bring us into dark places, we are more keenly aware that hope has to somehow come from outside ourselves. Now, in the verses we read, it's, they, they speak of the heart of the rescue from God in Christ Jesus that has given us as salvation. And the result of what God did in Christ is the gift of being considered and made right with God, of being acceptable to God, of being loved by God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, Paul is writing in this passage very intentionally, and he structures this very carefully so that we get the point of what he's saying. Looking at the first five verses, in verse 1 to 2, it's kind of a first sentence. We find Christ in the center. And now, Paul uses a very ancient literary technique, which we might call bookends. We've looked at this before. He uses bookends to highlight what's in the middle. So this is what he does in the opening verses of the chapter. He says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God. That's one bookend. And then on the other side is, we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. That's the other bookend. And in the middle are the words, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom? Jesus Christ is the center. So he opens with this, the center of our salvation, of our forgiveness of our sins, of our restoration and reconciliation with God and with others, is Jesus Christ the Savior. It's his death on the cross, it was for us, and his resurrection to victorious life was for us. That is the great gift of God. We didn't earn it, we don't deserve it, but we receive it because God has sovereignly chosen in his love to grant us eternal life in Christ. One of the ways to understand the work of organizations like Teen Challenge is as a conduit that God uses to give the gift of hope that comes through Jesus Christ. I think on your website I had a look and you recently held a radiothon right, called Day of Hope. It is what Teen Challenge offers in the name of Christ through all their ministry. They offer hope that we receive as a gift from God. So Jesus Christ is clearly in the center of that opening verse. That's the foundation of all that we do. And then, so in verses 2b and up to verse 5, Paul uses the same technique. Again, he uses this bookends, a writing method. And, and he mentions hope three times. Remember, this way, method is a way in the ancient time to focus the reader on what's in the middle of the two. So one bookend, verse 2b, says, And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And then the other, verse 5, says, And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. That's the two bookends. And in between those two bookends is this, verse 3. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. In other words, Paul is saying, since we have been given this amazing gift of hope in Christ, we need to use it. You see, it's not just that Jesus died for my sins and that at some point in the future, after I die, I hope I will then receive the glory of God. And the hope of the glory of God that he mentions is a, is a way of saying this. It's a way of saying the gift of restoration to what God intended us to be as human beings in the first place, as crowning masterpieces of his creation. So here, the, the hope of the glory of God is, is not the splendor of God's majesty, but the display of his amazing work, the work of his hands. It's not here talking about hoping that someday we will step into his glorious presence, which of course we hope for, no, Paul is talking here about the work of God in us today that rests not on us, but on what God has done and who he is for us in Christ Jesus. So verse 3 is sitting between those two mentions of hope that are not of our making, but are from God. The first one we rejoice in, we celebrate, we receive with gratitude. We cheer for the gift of hope. The second roots this gift's surety, its, its foundationalness, its solidness, roots it not in ourselves, but in God pouring out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. This hope, Paul is saying, all God's doing. And so we cannot read verse 3's hope in the middle of these two like it is some challenge to buck up and be the person of hope by keeping a stiff upper lip, so to speak, during trials and troubles. It's not that we are to be so grateful for suffering because through it we're going to figure out how to stick to the plan and that's going to make us admirable people. Out of that we'll create some hope for ourselves. This is not a call to fix your life by yourself. 
No, the effect of these two bookends of hope that is from God is to, and that is put in us by God is that now our sufferings, whether self-inflicted or as victims of others or circumstances, all our sufferings get penetrated, affected, and flooded with hope coming from Almighty God who is all-powerful and able to do all things because of the gift of hope. This gift of hope is from God through Christ, not from ourselves that's why Paul says we rejoice in our sufferings. Because it's a strange phrase. Rejoice in your sufferings. It sounds a little bit like be happy when you're suffering, but we know that's not real. Paul's not saying you should be happy and delightful when you're suffering, when you're walking a difficult path of pain or sorrow or regret or whatever. He's not making light of suffering. He's calling us in the midst of trials to look to Jesus. Because there is our hope. And it's not coming from us, but from God as a gift. It's not a paycheck for a good enough life we've lived. Sometimes we think of it that way. Ever see a link on a web page or the site of some social media site that has that, hey, you've been chosen for a free gift. Just head to our website and... Okay, so you check it out, and it turns out the free gift is 40% off your next purchase of $100, and all they sell are socks. Sometimes this is how the Christian faith can get presented. Come receive God's gift of hope. Please straighten out your life before you come to church. Not so, says Paul. We rejoice in the hope from God. And because of that free gift of hope in Christ, in the midst of our suffering, we come to trust that God is with us, will not abandon us, will work in us, right there in the mess, in the difficult pathway and steps that we take. And so, as we use the gift, we find God upholding us through the dark night. As we continue in hope along with many other graces from God in the journey, we are changed from people considered to be bad character by others to those with a tested character of God. Tested in that we come to believe and trust that God is faithful to his gift of hope. And this tested character results in even more hope flooding the rooms of our hearts and lives. Hope in Christ is an active usable gift from God because its power is from God. So Paul writes, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now it's not that the Holy Spirit of God has something called hope that he places in our hearts in the center of our being and then goes his way again. Then we might treat this hope as perhaps just another information or another technique to do something and we'll try to hang on to it. Or maybe we'll see it just as a verbal promise that awaits some future fulfillment. No, Paul writes, no, hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. That's why 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God's gift of hope is for us to live in now. Because God, through Christ, by his presence, with us and in us by his Spirit, is here now active. And that is what we receive by faith and not by our works. And then all our works, all the efforts and the failures and the retries and the detours and the wanderings and the returnings, they all get drawn up and transformed by the hope we have received as we lay them before the cross of Christ. When we face difficulties, whatever they might be, large or small, turn again and again and again to the gifts God has given Cling to his gifts in the midst of the journey and we will discover each day anew that the gifts of God are sure and effective because they are of God himself and he is present in them. Let's pray together. Lord, for the hope that we all live in in Christ Jesus because of your grace, we pray that it shine more and more in all parts of our lives. 
We know that each and every day there are parts, things going on in our lives, Lord, issues, worries, fears that we grapple with, and we do it as if we're hiding them away from you. Help us, Lord, to turn and hold them to you. For you are not far and distant. You are present with us in Christ by your Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord, that this hope, the power of your hope and present may may go far and wide into the lives of all who are hurting, all who might hear the message of the gospel today, that they may realize that is where our hope lies, for it lies there for all of us. Lord, forgive us if we have demonstrated by our lives that we are self-reliant somehow, and we have forgotten to give honor and glory to you, and help us, Lord, to always shine the light on you. And Lord, as we give now as well, we pray that the gospel may go forth, both here in the ministries of Bethany and specifically this morning, Lord, in Teen Challenge. And as we give, Lord, and consider giving uh, more regularly and maybe connecting more directly, we pray that you'll lead and guide us and we pray a blessing on the gifts that they may be powerfully used in the lives of those who, who are on the brink, that they may be snatched from darkness and brought back into the power and the glory and the grace and the peace and the love of your light. For that is the love that we enjoy. Lord, help us to cling to the cross and to continue to uphold each other in doing that. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Invite the deacons forward to take our offering. The offerings this morning are for uh, both the, the ministries we do here in Bethany as members and this morning specifically for Teen Challenge. And this is kind of your one-time gift that you can do, but of course you can give more regularly uh, both through the Bridge app or on our website. And you can also go directly to Teen Challenge and become a sponsor um, connected there as well. So keep that in mind. And invite Steve up for a moment. He's going to share a little bit from the deacons about the faith promise giving. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's that time of year again, I guess. Um, I'm Steve, and on behalf of the deacons, I want to uh, talk about Bethany's Faith Giving Package that's going to be emailed out this week. Most of you are familiar with it and how it works. Um, if, if you aren't, included in every package is a little bit more detailed information behind Faith Giving. There's a little bit about it, and then there's um, the forms to fill out and stuff. Um, last fall we made a real big push to have more people signed up for it um, and we had a lot of forms handed in it went awesome um, and then also last year we had a lot of people that uh, signed up for pre-authorized giving and that's been a real blessing during this time of COVID and stuff too for um, having some regular regular funds come in um, we like to encourage everyone to take time prayerfully consider how God has walked alongside you and your families especially during this time of COVID and the cha- challenges that is presented. Um, so again, the, uh, the forms will be emailed out this week. Um, and then you can either email them back or give them to a deacon or get them back to the church. Uh, if you have any questions about the, the faith giving information, um, you can contact one of the deacons. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you.
Let's rise together and sing. trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ to the glory of our Heavenly Father and God's people say. Amen.